Well, thank you very much and good afternoon. Um, very great pleasure to be here. I, I'm going to talk about human imagination, about ambition, about aspiration as being the basis upon which we have made significant breakthroughs over time and have created a, an extraordinary world around us. If you take the smartphone, I don't know if you realize that that thing that you've got in your pocket has got more computing power than the whole of NASA had in 1969 when they put a man on the moon. It's an extraordinary thing. The fact that we are using this to you know, put videos of our cats on, on Facebook and tweeting about what we had at breakfast kind of shows, shows that we've, our kind of ambitions have gone down. But what is really remarkable about the smartphone, I don't know if you're aware of this, there are at least 298 inventions from previous generations of people across about 92 countries who created, who changed the world by inventing things which were completely unrelated to the, sm the smartphone. But without them, we would never have a smartphone. And that's a remarkable story, and that's really what I want to, to trace. What I want to look at is the human imagination, our capacity to be curious, our capacity to explore, our capacity to not accept the world as it is, and in fact fight back against the limits that nature in fact has, has imposed upon us. And that's really the theme of my talk, the unlimited character of human imagination versus the limits of nature. So let me tell you, let me explain what I'm talking about. The problem with nature is that when we were created or emerged, we forgot to give us wings. We couldn't fly. So we looked at birds and we looked at insects and we, we, we dreamt about being able to soar on the wind. And what did we do? We created the aeroplane. We learnt about aerodynamics. We created vehicles that can transport people at speeds that nature itself can't do. We've even escaped the planet and we've gone into space and we're exploring the universe. That was because we overcame that limitation that nature placed upon us. Nature put us into darkness. It forced us into idleness when we, we were, you know, just had emerged from, from the apes. So what did we do? We, in, we took fire, we created fire, we created light. Not only did we do that, on the basis of fire we were able to cook. So it meant that we changed our diet and unlike any other animal, we were able to spend less of the t our time digesting food and therefore left us free to do other things. But in light as well, what we did was we created the basis of telecommunications. We created fiber optic cables. We created voice and data being able to tr be transmitted over uh, this technology, which created the internet, which has shaped so much of, of, of the current world that we're in. Nature allowed us to stand, unlike other animals. We were able to use our arms and we had dexterity with our hands, but the price we paid for that was that we lost power, that we were also not very good physically. You know, we can't run for very long, we can't, you know, we can't walk on water, well, some of us can, or well, some of us think we can. So what did we do? We created tools. Not only did we create tools that were able to enhance the power of nature but to, for, for, for human ends, we created tools that created tools. We created manufacturing. We transformed the world, the natural world, the natural bounty into uh, goods and consumer things that we could use and we could consume fundamental transformation of the natural world into a man-made one. What about the beautiful mountains and the oceans that nature left us? Well, it created problems for us because it meant we were tied to locations. We couldn't move. We had to exist within certain spaces. So what did we do? We invented agriculture. We learned how to, 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 to till the world. We built bridges. We invented ships. And all these things that had been previous barriers to us became channels, channels that transformed space and time, that transformed these things into channels of commerce, of further exploration, uh, of, of, of extraordinary um, uh, outcomes. Nature also 
didn't give us thick skins, and didn't give us fur. So we had to find shelter, we had to develop clothing, we had to build things ourselves in order to protect us from the environment and from predators. The result of which is we invented the brick, concrete, glass, steel. We've used these things to create structures that far outweigh any of the beauty of nature, I would argue. Cities, civilizations were all a consequence of our quest to overcome that limitation that nature placed upon us. Nature also made us vulnerable to disease. So what did we do? We investigated the body. We investigated where our energy came from, where sickness came from, where viruses came from, what viruses were. We created immunization. We created, at the moment, we've now got to a point with molecular biology where we can actually engineer life itself. That's how extraordinary um, our quest to overcome that, that real limitation that nature has placed upon us, that threat of death, that we don't face plagues like we did in the past, that we've, we've, we've developed the intelligence and the understanding of the human body that we can do stuff like that. It also limited our brains, because unfortunately, and probably I can say this with a little more authority than some of the people in the audience, you, know, you lose your memory as you get older. We are not able to retain all the knowledge that we have. We were not able to communicate in the way that we, 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 we could have. So what did we do? We learned to develop systems of language and alphabets and writing, we were able to translate those thoughts and all that, those, those ideas into things that could be passed on to other people. We created the printing press. The printing press created books, the repositories of the collective intelligence of humanity are now restored in, in a form that can be passed on to future generations where we are not limited anymore by the limited capacities of our brains. I don't know if you know what this image is. Well, it's a rendition of what was supposed to have happened over, a, over about a billion years ago. In about maybe 100 million light years uh, universe, 100 million light years away from Earth. This is the representation of two black holes merging together. And when this happened, they created a huge f force, m more energy than existed in the universe, and created a wave and ripple through that. Now, I don't know if you saw this a few weeks ago. We actually, for the first time, measured that wave. That wave was measured for the first time by mankind that actually showed that over a billion years ago, this event took place. And whilst we emerged from the animals, from the apes, when the dinosaurs went extinct, when all of human history was happening, this wave was moving towards the Earth, getting weaker and weaker, but moving towards the Earth. The remarkable thing on the 14th of September 2016 was that we were able to measure this for the first time because we've now reached a point of our technological development where we can develop, we have developed the tools and the technologies that could measure something as minute as this. And this simply confirmed that this happened that this is a remarkable thing. What's even more remarkable is that Einstein had predicted this over 100 years ago. It was a, a thought experiment. His whole theory of relativity, which he could not prove in the way that we're now able to do, 100 years later, we have proved that he was absolutely right. He imagined this, understood this. It was conjured up in the mind of, a, of, of, of an individual. That is a remarkable, absolutely remarkable attest att att to how extraordinary the human brain is, how extraordinary people are, as are all the other examples of what I've, I've just pre presented to you. So what I'd say to you is this. Breakthroughs are based upon our capacity to overcome the limits that are placed upon us, whether they are limits that have been placed upon us by nature or indeed self-imposed limits. We have been skeptical of our own, our own human beings have been skeptical of some of the aspirations that people might have had in the past and, and laughed at people when they said they would try to do certain things or prove certain things or even fly or travel at speed. You know, there was a lot of skepticism. We had to go against that. Human imagination is unlimited. 
That's the fantastic thing about human imagination, which is why I think we need more people, not less. Why I think that all the problems that we face in the world today, which indeed one of the biggest problems for me is how hum humanity itself and human achievement is now being questioned in a way that it has never happened in the past. The whole gains of the enlightenment, of all the ideas that have articulated that journey from, from early days through to the transformation of this natural world around us into a man-made environment is now being brought into question. And that really bothers me, because I think the one asset that we have got an unlimited capacity for is our imaginations, is our creativity, is our capacity to be curious, to go in where no man has gone before, to have that aspiration of discovering new knowledge, of doing things. And that's the most wonderful thing about what happened with the gravitational waves and what we were able to, to hear. Because what that has meant is that up until now, our study of the universe has been like a silent film. Now we can hear. It's become, it's almost like color in the movies and sound has now come to our understanding of the universe. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that we don't know what this is gonna reveal about where we've come from and what, what, what this is all about. And that's the wonderful thing about it. It's the unintended consequences. It's the unpredictability of what we are learning and pushing new boundaries of knowledge that we know that in the quest of doing that, we will be able to solve more and more problems here on Earth. And that's the, 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 the fantastic thing about it. So my plea to everybody is to never ever rein in your aspiration to think big, to think ambitiously, to, think, to have imaginations, to have dreams, to, to go where you might think you shouldn't be going, but to go nevertheless. And in the quest of doing that, you'll discover things about yourself and about the world that will transform the world. Thank you very much.